back to educator.com. This lesson is on density and buoyancy. Density is the amount of matter in a given amount of space. So really it's based on how packed together the atoms and molecules in a substance is. So for a given amount of space, let's say we're given the exact same amount of space. And in terms of the amount of matter, we have atoms or molecules of gases moving around in this space. Okay, so one side we have, it looks like nine particles, and the other side, they're packed together a little bit better, so we have well more than nine particles. And what that means is there's more matter right here on the right and less matter on the left. And more matter means it's more dense because it has more matters in that same amount of space. You can calculate density by taking the mass and dividing it by the volume. So if we knew the mass of a substance, say a mass would be 10 and it's measured in grams, and if we know the volume of a substance, let's say it's 20, and this could be milliliters or you can measure it in centimeters cubed. And we'll see examples of both of those today. So we take 20 grams divided by the amount, the volume, 20 milliliters, and you would get one half, or we write in decimal, we write in decimals here, so it would be 0 0.5, and the label would be grams per milliliter for this one. Okay, and that's if you're measuring like a liquid, you'll get milliliters, really. If we were to measure the density of this box, this nice blue box right here, what we would need to know is how to find the volume of that. Well, for any rectangular box, you do length times width times height. So let's say the length is 10, and the height is 5, and the width is 4. So 10 times 5 times 4 would give you that length times width times height, which would, is giving us our volume, equals 200. And the label for that is, if this was 10 centimeters, and this is 5 centimeters, and this is 4 centimeters, you have centimeters times centimeters times centimeters, which would give you cent centimeters cubed. Okay? So, the volume of the cube is 200 centimeters cubed. Okay, and the mass of that cube uh, is going to be 400 grams. Okay, so to find the density, mass divided by volume, 400, divided by 200, this was grams, and this is centimeters cubed, so your answer is 2 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, so a gram per centimeter cubed really is the same as the gram per milliliter. It just depends on what you're measuring. A solid, regularly shaped object, it's easy to measure in centimeters cubed. But uh, a liquid object or something you have to measure um, by displacing fluid, an irregular object we'll get into in a second, that you measure with milliliters because you're dealing with fluids. So, speaking of, we're looking at the density of irregular objects. If I wanted to measure the density of this green, maybe it's a rock shape right here, what I need to do is find the mass and the volume. All right, well, easier said than done because I don't know how to find the volume of that by measuring it like we did with the cube. So what we do here is we, we do a process where we displace water. So we, we're going to use the displacement of water to measure the volume of an irregular object. Okay, it's very easy to find the mass. You just need to put it on a scale. Okay, and then for volume, we're going to use displacement of water. And what that means is you have a beaker of water, just like this one right here. And you mark 
on the side. You don't have to mark it, but you have to take the first uh, measurement of the volume. So let's say it starts off here with 100 milliliters of water, okay? And then you will put the object into this beaker. So I'm gonna kind of draw the beaker around the object here. So, you know, we put it in. Okay. And the water, what it will do, the water level will rise. You might have seen this like if you took a bath. You jump into the bath and the water level rises. You're displacing that water. The same thing's going to happen when you put this object into the water. The water level will rise. So now your new measurement is right here. Let's say it went up to, we'll keep it simple here, 200 milliliters. Okay, so the amount the water was displaced is between 100 and 200 milliliters. So the difference between the two, all you have to do is subtract, is 100 milliliters. Okay, so for displacement, you take the difference. In uh, the two measurements. The two measurements. One measurement you take before you put the object in the water, right here, and then one measurement you take after you put the object in the water. So subtract it, and we have 100 milliliters. Well, all we have to do is put that object on a scale. Okay, so it measures 200 grams. Divide that by your volume, 100 milliliters, and your density of that object is two grams per milliliter, okay? Just that simple, mass divided by volume. And to find the volume, you use displacement. Now the density of water, this is an important one because later this will tell us if objects sink or float based on how their density relates to the density of water. So water, if you took one gram of water, or if you took one milliliter of water, it would equal one gram. Not equal, it would weigh one gram. It would have a mass of one gram. One milliliter of water has a mass of one gram. One gram of water has a volume of one milliliter. So the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Okay, that's gonna be really important. And it's a nice easy one to remember. The density of water is one gram per milliliter. All right, keep that one in mind for the next slide.